Hey everyone, it's Bradley Bush with another algebra video. Today we're talking about polynomials and their graphs. Our to-do list, quick review of polynomials, and then after our review of polynomials, we'll talk about the focus of this video, which is multiplicities of zero. So we'll discuss some rules for multiplicities, what they are, um, how they act, and then we'll do three quick examples so you can kind of see how things work. All right, let's get going. Polynomials. You probably have seen polynomials before. Most students have. Here's an example of a polynomial. This polynomial has three specific parts that we'll highlight. The first part you should recognize is that these exponents here, let me add a couple exponents in here. There's a one here above the x, and over here there's an implied x to the zero x to the 0 is just equal to 1, so it doesn't, we don't write it, but technically uh, it's there. So we have these exponents that go from 3 down to 2 to 1 and then 0. So you can see that they decrease by 1 each time, and they go from whatever the top one is, which is 3 down to 0. So there's a rule that we have, there's a property of polynomials that your exponent, which is n, and you can see n here in our general, this is the general definition, the most generic, it fits every situation, but it's kind of hard to understand, so we'll break it down quickly. So here's n, n is the exponent, it can be 0, 1, 2, 3, on up to whatever your highest exponent is, but they have to be non-negative integers, so 0, 1, 2, and on up. So we have n that goes in here. This next one, you subtract 1, just like we went from 3 to 2. And then subtract 2, just like we went to 3, 2 to 1. And you keep going until, of course, you have the 1 here. And you can have the x0 there that's implied. So there are your exponents. The next thing we should talk about, we have variables, right? We've got a variable here, variable here. And this last variable because it has a zero as an exponent doesn't isn't written. So we have variables in our generic form. So that's nothing crazy. The last thing is that we have all of these constants in front. These constants in front are represented up in this generic version by the a's. And this n minus 1 just means it goes with the second term that has n minus 1 as the exponent. This n just means it goes with the first term with n. So that the, the subscript is just a indicator, a label. So this would be a n, which in our case n equals 3. So this would be a cubed. This is a squared. This is a to the 1. This is a zero. So that's it really. These exponents, or sorry, these uh, coefficients, the a's can be any real number. That's it. Last comment, polynomials are smooth and continuous. They don't need breaks or sharp edges. And the highest power, the n, is called the degree of the polynomial. So in our example, this polynomial is of degree three. Let's talk about multiplicities. So multiplicity just means that you have a repeated root or a repeated zero. You don't just have one of them. You've got maybe two or three or more than one. So here's some rules. The first thing is if you have an even multiplicity, meaning two, four, six, then the graph touches but turns around. It touches the x-axis but turns around. Just like we see here, it comes up, touches, and turns around. It doesn't cross. If you have an odd multiplicity, then it crosses the x-axis. So for example, here, 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 and here. So you can see odd multiplicity, meaning one root or three roots that are the same, so a root repeats itself three times, or five times, 
or just once. Those are all odd multiplicities. And the final comment, the higher the multiplicity, the flatter the graph is near the zero. So you can see here the graph comes up, is really flat, and then goes up. So the higher the multiplicity, the flatter it is. Not too bad, right? When you're finding zeros of polynomials, all you're really doing is finding x-intercepts. That's it. There's some other names that we use for zeros. They are roots and solutions and x-intercepts. Those are all the same thing. It's kind of confusing, I know, but all of those mean the same thing. Zeros, roots, solutions, x-intercepts. So how we find x-intercepts? That's something you've probably done a lot. You just take the function set equals zero and then solve the resulting equation for x. And how do you solve for x? Well, you can factor, you can complete the square, you can use the quadratic formula, you can graph, or use technology, you can use synthetic division. All of those things will help you find zeros. So let's do an example of one. So this one, <clears throat> the function you're given here is a polynomial with the highest power is four. So we have the potential of having four roots, real roots. Some of them could be imaginary or they could all be real. But I've factored it here for you so it's easier for you to see. If we take this exponent of two and we say x minus two squared really is just the same thing as having two of these things, then we have x, we have x minus 2, we have x minus 2 here, and then we have x minus 4 here. When we set this equal to 0 and we solve, we take each of these individual terms and we set it equal to 0 and solve for x. So the first term is already done because once we set equal to 0, there's nothing left to do. The second one, though, we're, we can do some more work with. If we set, if we have x minus 2 equals 0, we add 2 to both sides. That gives us x equals 2. And this other one is the same, right? Because it's the exact same term, x minus 2. So this gives us another x equals 2. And how about the x minus 4? Well, if we add 4 to both sides just to solve for x, what do we get? We get x equals 4. So here you can see we have x equals 0 as a root. Look at right there on the graph, 0. x equals 0. It crosses, that means it has an odd multiplicity. And notice we only have 1. So x equals 0 as a root with multiplicity, there's only one of them. How about x equals 2? Notice it touches and turns around, so we have an even multiplicity, which is true because we've got an x equals 2 there, got an x equals 2 there. So for x equals 2, we've got multiplicity of 2 because it occurs twice. And then our final one, x equals 4, we have that root. We found it algebraically, but there's only one of them, so we know it's an odd multiplicity and it crosses. So this is actually, once you do it once, it's kind of like, yeah, okay, well, I can do this. Even multiplicities touch and turn around, regardless of whether they come from the bottom or whether they come from the top of the graph. And the odd multiplicities cross. And the higher the multiplicity, the flatter it is. Whoa. So let's do another one. Here our function is x cubed plus 2x squared minus 4x minus 8. So we've got four terms. If we find, want to find the zeros and their multiplicity, we've got four terms, so it's factored by grouping. If we take the first two and group those and take the second two and group those, then we have our line right here with the green and the purple. We look at all that and we say, well, what can we take out of the green? We've got an x cubed and a 2x squared. We can take out an x squared from both of those. So let's take out an x squared from both of those. What we have left is we have one of the x's left in the x cubed, and we took the x squared away from the 2x squared, so we just have a 2 left over. Then 
we look at the purple and we say, well, what can we take out of there? What's common? What's common here in the purple? It looks like just a negative four. So let's plot a negative four. And we're left with x plus two uh, because x comes from the negative four x and the two you multiply by negative four to get the negative eight. So we've factored out the common parts in each of the two different groups. And the goal when you factor by grouping is to say, well, what's left over? Is it the same? Well, for us it worked because we have x plus two in both of these terms. So because they're the same, we can factor that out and it comes out in front. So we pull out the x plus two and what's left? Well, we've got an x squared that comes down here and we have negative four, which comes down below as well. So we have x plus two is factored out front and the leftovers, the x squared comes down and the negative four comes down as well. Now we look at the x squared minus four and we say, hey, that looks like something we recognize. That looks like the difference of squares. x squared minus two squared. And we have the formula for the difference of squares here. It gives you, when you factor it, it becomes x minus two x plus two. And so we write that out. And then we have our three different terms that are all multiplied together, set equal to zero. So we set each of them individually equal to zero and solve. This gives us what? Let's not add, let's subtract two here from both sides. And that gives us x equals negative two. There's one solution. And by the way, that's the same one as over here. So we're just going to write that down. Our next one, we add two to both sides and we get x equals positive two. So it looks like we have x equals two occurring once here and once here, so twice. So we have x equals two with multiplicity two. Whoops, that should be negative two, excuse me. Happening twice. Do we see that in our graph? We do. X equals two is here. You see it comes up, touches and turns around because it has an even multiplicity. And the last one occurs just once. X equals two occurs once. So you can see also on the graph, since it has an odd multiplicity, it crosses. Not bad at all, right? Let's do another quick example. Here's a, an equation here, negative x to the fourth plus four x cubed minus four x squared. So we have three terms, so we can't really factor by grouping, but I see that all of them have pretty high powers. They all at least have x squared. So I think that we should start by factoring out the common term. But before we do that, I don't like this negative out front personally. So I just multiply everything by negative one. So we have this set equal to zero and we multiply it by negative one and that changes all the signs. So we're now down to the second line. Now we can pull out a common factor of x squared. And if we pull out x squared, we've got from the first term, we have two left. So we have x squared there. We have one x left of the second term. So we have negative four x. And if we pull out x squared, that's everything from the third term. So we just have positive four left in the third term. So then we look at the x squared minus 4x plus 4, we think, hey, we can factor that. And, if, and in fact, that factors into x minus 2 and x minus 2. This beautiful x squared here can factor into x times x. So we set all of those equal to 0 now, all four of those factors, the x, the x, the x minus 2, and the x minus 2, all equal to 0. And what do we get? 
Well, the first two are simple, right? Because we're done. How about the second one? Well, we add two to both sides. And you can see we get x equals two here. And we also get x equals two in this next one, because it's the exact same thing. So if you look, we think, hey, this is um, interesting. We've got x equals zero twice and x equals two twice. So they're both even multiplicities. So what do we expect the graph to do? We have zero multiplicity two and x equals two with multiplicity two. Well, we expect the graph at x equals zero and x equals two to touch and turn around. Does it do it? It does. So there you go. There's a quick introduction to multiplicities of zeros. If you have an even multiplicity, then you're graph touches and turns around when it hits the x-axis. If you have an odd multiplicity, it crosses the x-axis. And the higher the multiplicity, the flatter it is at the x-axis when it touches or crosses. That's it. I hope this helps. If it does, please subscribe to the channel and have a great day.